This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, the side ports are created, the air bubble is put inside, and as I'm trying to inject anesthetic into the eye, the iris starts to prolapse out. Have you seen anything like this? You must have. This is Dr. Deepak Meghur and let me share with you an unusual intraoperative event which will help us to learn a bit. He is a 70 year old man with an intermittent cataract. Nothing unusual, seems a routine case. Surgery is being done under tropical anesthesia. The side ports are being made. Air bubble goes in followed by intracameral lignocaine. It's about 0.1 to 0.2 ml. Immediately the iris tries to come out and the AC shallows a bit. I am aware of it at this point of time but I am not giving it too much significance. So I am re-entering with my cannula this time to inject the trypan blue dye. I decompress the chamber by pressing the posterior lip a bit then trying to push in the iris. Now the dye is being injected under the air bubble. It's about 0.2 ml. I am bending my capsulotomy cystitome in the meantime. Now is the time to irrigate out the dye. At this point, I am aware of the iris being still stuck in the side port wound. As I enter the cannula, the iris along with the posterior lip of the side port incision is pressed down to release some of the fluid first and then I am doing gentle irrigation to wash out all the dye. Well, the iris is still refusing to go in and the chamber seems to be a bit tight now. Eye is a little hard as well and there seems to be less space to maneuver. At this point, I am asking my assistant to load up intracameral dilating agent along with an anesthetic. I am also inquiring the, with the patient whether he is on any anti-prostate drugs and he replies he doesn't use any. The technique which I am using here to decompress the chamber is by pressing the posterior lip of the incision to allow the fluid to escape out, followed by any attempt to reposition the iris back. The intracameral dilating agent is being used now, it's about 0.1 ml, hoping that the iris will behave a little bit better. At this moment, I'm still not sure what is causing this event now. I'm considering two possibilities. Number one is IFIS and second is a fluid misdirection. But fluid misdirection usually happens much later and very little fluid is used so far. I need to put in OVD but I'm concerned the iris will pop out again. So consciously I'm using the opposite side port to place the dispersive OVD containing chondritin sulfate over the peripheral part of the iris so that it is pushed down and away from the side port. And then the remaining part of the antechamber is gradually filled with the same resulting in a decent deepening of the chamber. The 2.8 mm main incision is created, a two stage rexus is planned for this intumescent lens. The initial primary small rexus is being attempted now. The chamber is very shallow and the bag is extremely tense. However, with a couple of attempts, it is completed. This is followed by decompression of the capsule bag with the phaco tip itself. And time to enlarge the rexus. An appropriately sized rexus is eventually created. Phaco emulsification of the nucleus is being done. It is the routine stuff and I'm going to fast forward it until we reach the interesting part. This is the last piece which is being emulsified. I can see very little fundal glow. Well, this point establishes the diagnosis and it became crystal clear to me now. The lack of glow explains all the reasons for the initial shallowing of the antechamber and also repeated iris prolapse. The reason for the lack of the fundal glow is the presence of trypan blue in the burger space and this is the evidence for the reason for initial behavior of the iris in the antechamber. It is fluid misdirection. Whatever little cortex is there is aspirated carefully. The IOL is implanted into the bag and the OVD is removed in time to close.
and during the course of the surgery as the time passes by we can see that the fundal glow improves and the trypan blue has traversed back into the anterior chamber and out of the eye i'm using intracameral pilocarpin just to ensure that the pupil is round and there is no iris tissue still sticking into the side port wounds Okay, let's try to rewind and understand the chronology of the events. The two side ports are created. The chamber and the iris are still fine, no issues. Air is injected, followed by a small amount of intracameral anesthetic, and this changes the dynamics in the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber shallows, followed by iris prolapse. Well, even this tiny amount of fluid, if it gets across the zonules, will cause positive pressure. resulting in shallowing of the chamber and the iris trying to prolapse out the trypan blue as well got into the burger space resulting in that eventual blue glow now following our my observations about this event in this particular case fluid misdirection might be one of the most common causes for positive posterior pressure but is often underdiagnosed Fluid misdirection is a situation wherein the fluid traverses across the zonular barrier into the potential space posterior to the lens. It is not uncommon to find the zonular barrier being ineffective and allowing the fluid from the anterior chamber to get into the posterior lenticular space. A combination of loose zonular barrier and presence of anterior vitreous detachment results in the fluid getting accumulated in the burger space. elderly age pseudo exfoliation long standing cataracts are some of the common causes for generalized zonular weakness and also compromised barrier functions of the zonules typically we see this phenomenon at the later part of the surgery that's during cortex aspiration and eye implantation because we have given enough time for the fluid to percolate across the zonules and there is always a higher risk of posterior capsular rupture associated with this phenomenon as the pc bulges out anteriorly but in this case we saw it at the beginning itself this taught me that even a tiny amount of fluid can cause fluid misdirection syndrome point number 3 if it happens in the early part of the surgery how are we going to deal with it as we start phaco emulsification we expect the more fluid to be misdirected and the situation could potentially get worse now using a dispersive ovd as was done in this case does help as it acts like a temporary barrier preventing further fluid from traversing across the zonules number 4 it's important to understand that intraoperative fluid misdirection is a temporary phenomenon the fluid is trapped in the burger space and not in the vitreous cavity the anterior hyoid is still intact and the burger space is in direct communication with the anterior chamber across the permeable zonules the trap fluid eventually escapes out into the anterior chamber as was seen in this case the evidence was the blue glow eventually turned orange over a period of few minutes a diagnosis is challenging especially if it happens in the early part of the surgery a high degree of suspicion does help so that was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful